Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Emma Cownley and today I'm going to be cluing you in on three of the most persuasive techniques you can use in your writing. This is especially useful to base campaigns on, landing pages, emails, print marketing and also can even be used as the foundation for your branding. What are these three magic things that are going to transform your writing automatically making it more persuasive. Rhetorical devices, my friend. The three techniques I'm referring to are known as the modes of persuasion and are Aristotelian in nature. This basically means that many, many years ago in ancient Greece, Aristotle came up with a way to efficiently persuade people in a debate. He watched a lot of people do a lot of confabbing in public arguing, debating, putting forth reason, public speaking, and he came to the conclusion that there were three main principles underpinning all the most compelling persuasive arguments. And these he named ethos, pathos, and logos. Now before you switch off this video because you think that is bananas, it sounds technical, it sounds Greek, all Greek to me, I don't know what you're talking about and this is never gonna work, yes it will. And I can tell you it will work because a lot of advertising campaigns already use this and they are campaigns you see every day and you don't even know they're using these techniques. You'll get it when I begin to explain. So let's start with pathos, aka emotional persuasion. You can use this in a number of different ways. You can use emotional language, things like love, hate, need, must, never, words that automatically kickstart a response in your brain. You read them and you think, oh, I've got to know what that is. Incorporating words like that will always get a reaction from your reader, but you can use it in another way as well. If you frame your campaign or your pitch in such a way that the reader imagines themselves in that position, you're onto a winner straight away. This can come in the form of perhaps recreating a relationship that's familiar to one they already have in their lives. It can come in the form of setting up a scenario that they wish would happen, that they really hope doesn't happen, that they are in right now. It all comes down to making the situation relatable in a way that's going to generate an emotion from them. This is super duper effective because as we all know as marketers, people buy benefits, not features. This comes down to the fact that we are emotionally led creatures. If you can make somebody feel something, they are likely to convert far faster than they would if you're spending all your time explaining a list of features and specifications to them. That tends to come a lot further down the line when they need to justify the purchase to themselves. If you want a quick reaction and a really, really deep connection, go for the, go for the feels. Go for the feels every time. That's pathos working for you and you can see it. I used an example recently in a blog post which I will link below and that is the Caesar dog food advert. I don't know if you ever saw it. Little old man and his dog, oh my God. Gets me every time. It's only a, what, 20 second advert? Fucking hell. It's deep. I may even pop a link to it below, but make sure you've got tissues handy before you click play, because damn. Mode of persuasion number two, ethos. This is where you are convincing your customer that you are a person of moral fibre. You want them to think you have a really upstanding character that you're trustworthy, that you're at the top of your field, that you're commanding authority, they're more likely to listen to you and to believe what you're saying if you use ethos in your marketing. You can do this in a few different ways. You can use an influencer, you can get a high profile sponsor, or you can base your company on really ethical foundations. So an example of that would be Lush, Waitrose, Farm Drop, Body Shop, they're all 
Tom's, the shoe company, they all have a foundation rooted in community. They're trying to change the way that the industry they are in does things and customers buy into that. They want to do something good. They want to do something with a conscience. They support your brand because you have a belief you're not out for money. But yes, you are, but they don't really care about that. They have to put their money somewhere because they are consumers and all they do is consume. So if they'd rather give it to a good cause, then Brill, that could be you. Influencers and sponsors, on the other hand, that works using the halo effect. That is to say that the characteristics of the person who is speaking for you or promoting your product automatically reflects onto you and your brand. For example, if you are selling protein and you have a really fit looking fitness model on Instagram and she's saying that she uses your brand of protein, I guarantee you sales are going to go through the roof because people want to look like her, they can see the physical results on her, they know that it's real, they know that that comes from you, they're coming straight to you. Similarly, you know, there's a reason that Rooney sells so many footballs for whoever it is he sells footballs for, is it Nike? I don't know, I'm really ignorant about sport, sorry. Either way, you think he uses that football brand, you want that football brand because he's good, he knows what he's talking about, therefore Nike must be good. You buy Nike. There you have ethos in action. The final mode of persuasion is Logos and that is using statistics and fact to back up your argument. This is typically used very selectively as I'm sure you can imagine. You are specifically choosing the stats and figures that back up your argument. Painting a full unbiased picture is just, it's just not going to work here. You can see this in a lot of print advertising. They will typically pull out stats to show how terrible the situation is now. For example, a mattress salesman might say, statistically speaking, the UK population has X amount of sleepless nights. This leads to X percent in lost productivity every day, but you can change that by buying one of our mattresses. You see how it works here, it's all very simple. Another of my ultimate favourite uses of Logos is um, advertising channels. I don't know if you watch them for fun like I do, but the infomercials that they have on there are so good at building a compelling argument. If you ever have a spare 15 minutes and you really hate your life, you can switch on to one of these advertising channels and watch through the way they build the arguments. They pull in case studies, testimonials, statistics, demonstrations. It's really good. It's so good. I don't need these products. I know I don't need these products, but I love watching those things. Conclusion. What are you going to do with these three modes of persuasion? You can use one, you can mix and match, or you can use all three. But ultimately, there's a reason these things have been around for hundreds of years, and that's because they are damn good. They work. They just really work. So if you'd like to give them a try in your next campaign, or maybe you really want your print marketing to have that little bit of something extra, give it a go. Base your argument around that. Really convince your customer that you are the best solution using these persuasive devices. If you'd like a little bit of extracurricular reading, I've actually done a fair few blog posts on rhetoric because it's my jam. It really is. I love it. Um, so I'll pop a few links to the articles below and I think I've even done a few videos. One of them is speech writing, but let me say this, you can use the techniques for speech writing in writing essays or structuring out any kind of compelling argument. You can use those same fundamentals, so do check it out. And I think that's about all for this week. If you have a question you'd like to ask me, just pop a comment below and I'll get right back to you. Or you can call me out on Twitter at EJ Cownley and I'll answer your questions for you. Until next week, take care.